Hey, what's up guys? So today we're revisiting the Loki Ghost S1 small form factor case and retesting a couple different configurations when it comes to CPU cooling. Now, if you missed my full review of this case a couple of weeks ago, definitely go back and watch that for a bit of context. Otherwise, to sum up cooling performance, a 240 millimeter AIO in the top mounted position was able to effectively cool a stock delittered 8700K below 50 degrees C and air cooling was okay with the Noctua L9 by 65. Essentially, today we want to get to the bottom line and find out the optimal CPU cooling setup for this case, just as we have done with the Dan A4 and the NCASE M1. All right, so the two configurations that we're testing today for the Ghost S1, uh, which you guys wanted me to check out after my initial review, are uh, the Noctua L12. So this is supposedly the biggest heatsink that you can fit in the Ghost S1 with a CPU cooler height of 66 millimeters. And we're also going to try the Kraken X52, which is a 240 mil AIO. And we're gonna try that in the bottom mounted position. So a lot of you guys saw the top mounted uh, position for the AIO, which is the top hat. You can actually put that in the bottom mounted position and it looks a lot better but cooling performance is yet to be seen. I'll be testing these with the 8700K at the same voltages and clock speeds on the same motherboard that I tested with initially. So that way we can isolate the CPU coolers as the tested variables. And as I do have the i9 9900K at the moment, I am interested to see if we can run this uh, in this case. I know it'll run on the 240 mil. I, I don't know what the temperatures will be, but I'm really interested to see if I can get it to run uh, on an air cooler like the L12. All right, so let's start with the 240 mil AIO in the bottom mounted position. And a lot of you guys wanted me to check this out because it does look a lot more balanced and pleasing than having it in the top mounted position. So it is completely doable, although I still experienced the slight fitment issues as in my initial review, as the tolerances here are not perfect. Specifically, the sides of the top hats still bow inwards if you tighten them up. And I actually found that fitting the bottom panel onto the top hats was a bit tough and did require several attempts. In the end, it did require me to loosen up the top hats to get a snug fit. Another consideration is the fact that with an AIO in the bottom mounted position, you'll need to route the tubing directly underneath the power supply, so expect a bit of compression there. And lastly, and arguably most importantly, you'll need to secure the top panel to the frame, but the provided screws don't fit flush with the panel and ruin the otherwise flawless exterior. You could of course leave the top panel on without screws, but the side panels will no longer be locked into the case and you really need to be careful before picking it up. Other than those issues, I do much prefer the bottom mounted position for the Ghost S1 as it gives a more balanced look, but thermals unfortunately were quite a bit worse compared to having it in the top mounted position. It seems that the fans were starved here a bit for airflow as not only are they wedged between the radiator and the rest of the build, but the Ghost S1 has very limited clearance from the floor to pull air from. So although an AIO does look better in the bottom position, the top position is what I personally recommend for better thermal performance. Let's move on to what should be the most optimal solution for air cooling the Ghost S1, and that's the Noctua L12. Again, I will mention that this is not the same as the newer L12S. That one will not fit as it's 70 millimeters in height. Now, when installed, the L12 looks like it was purposely built for the Ghost, which I can definitely appreciate, covering the entirety of your motherboard with a high performance look. Motherboard and memory compatibility will need to be checked though. My Dominator Platinum memory from Corsair was a bit too tall and could not fit with the heatsink on. So instead, I opted for some low profile HyperX memory. VRM heatsinks will also need to be checked specifically if your motherboard has a large VRM heatsink at the top of the board that will likely interfere with the heat pipes on the L12. I've got it mounted here on the ASRock Z390 Phantom and luckily there were no issues. By the way, review on that board coming up real soon. In terms of CPU thermals, the L12 was able to beat the L9 by 65, but only by a couple of degrees with the delitted 8700K sitting a little over 73 degrees C during a blender render. Now temperature graphs don't really show the full picture here as I can highly recommend the Noctua L12 for its outstanding noise levels at full load. For starters, the fan on the L9 by 65 spins much faster and louder at 2400 RPM compared to the fan on the L12 that tops out at just 1650 RPM. The other reason that the L12 is much quieter is the positioning of the fan. It's tucked between the CPU cold plate and the heatsink, so a lot of that noise is suppressed. The L9 by 65 on the other hand has the fan very close to that side panel, and this results in a lot of turbulence and increase in noise when the panel is closed. As for the 9900K, well, I could barely get it to run on that Noctua L12. 
At stock, it was hitting the thermal limit of 100 degrees C within about a minute. And even with an undervolt running at just 1.1 volts, the 9900K was not running at safe temperatures. If you do restrict the 9900K to that 95 watt TDP, meaning that it will only boost to around four gigahertz uh, across all eight cores at full load, you might be able to get it to run on the uh, L12. You probably will have to undervolt as well. But at that point, you really are defeating the point of buying a 9900K in my opinion. Should just go for an AIO there. Now with the bottom mounted Kraken X52, I was able to run the 9900K with an unlimited TDP running at 4.7 gigahertz and 1.2 volts. So you definitely can make it work. As we saw with the 8700K testing, running the radiator in the top position is the best choice here for thermal performance. So there is room for improvement here as well. So since I'm using the Ghost S1 as my main editor, and gaming build at the moment, I decided to settle with the NHL 12 with my D-littered 8700K. I've got the turbo frequency set to 4.7 gigahertz at a slight undervolt of 1.17 volts. And this way I'm able to balance some great performance and decent enough temperature levels in an ultra compact form factor. So wrapping things up, if you're looking for the best cooling performance possible in this case, definitely go for that top mounted 240 mil AIO with the large top hat. There you've got plenty of room for overclocking an 8700K or Ryzen 2700X and some slight headroom with a 9900K. Now, for those of you who aren't entirely sold on the Ghost and are also considering other cases, definitely consider the N-Case M1, which we've covered extensively on this channel. It actually outperforms the Ghost by a few degrees, both in water-cooled and air-cooled systems. For air cooling, the Ghost S1 is only one liter bigger than the Dan A4, yet in regards to air cooling, it's miles ahead. The L12 is the best cooling solution that I've tested so far in terms of air cooling. I can highly recommend it, and it's my favorite setup for the Ghost S1 full stop. Part of that has to do with the additional cost of the top hat and the slight fit munitions that I've experienced with those as well. So that wraps up my CPU cooling for the Ghost S1. Uh, if you guys have any other CPU coolers that you think would beat the L12 or the Kraken X52. Definitely recommend those. Uh, I might test those in the near future. Also, if you haven't uh, watched my initial review of the Ghost S1, definitely go back and watch that. I think it's one of the best videos I've ever put out on the channel. The next order of business for my Ghost S1 build will be getting rid of those ugly stock cables. Even though you can't see them with the side panel off, definitely want to clean those up and get some custom sleep cables in there. And I am planning on upgrading a few different pieces of hardware in here as well. So expect a build video up uh, coming real soon. I am also interested in checking out some more affordable ITX cases and small form factor cases specifically. So if you guys have any recommendations, possibly from Fractal Design or Silverstone or another company, has to be under 20 liters and preferably under $100. Leave your recommendations down below and I will check those out. As always guys, huge thanks for watching. Subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one.